Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Red Lion Controls, and I'm excited to show you our Amazon Web Services MQTT connector for Crimson 3.1. We're currently looking at the web server running on my CR3000 10-inch HMI. If I turn on the output, we see that output status go to on. We also have some set point data down at the bottom, the low set point at 3, the high at 20. Those are Modbus registers inside a simulator that I'm running. If I change these, we see them change on the fly uh, in real time. So I've just changed them to 18 and 5. In addition to interacting with the device physically on my desk, I also have uh, the ability to remotely view and control the HMI. So if I come in here and turn that output back off, we see that happen on the screen. And if I move to the trend screen using my mouse, I see that reflected on the HMI as well. So I have complete remote control. I've enabled that in Crimson 3.1. So now what we want to do is send some of this data to the Amazon Web Services platform. Let's take a look at how we do that in Crimson 3.1. All right, on the left-hand side in our navigation pane, I'm in the communications area, and I'm gonna come down to connectors and look for Amazon MQTT. In the editing pane, the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and enable that agent. And then we see some information that will be required from the platform in order to connect our device with the endpoint. So the first thing we're going to need to know is the host name. So that's the place where our platform resides. Then we'll need to give our device a name. It, Crimson helpfully suggests Crimson Thing, thing 01. I'm going to call mine CR3000A. I'm going to need some security information that will come from the platform. So now let's go over and take a look at the Amazon Web Services platform itself. I've got it open here in the background and I don't have anything registered at the moment. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to create a single thing. The name I gave this device is cr 3000 a. So I want to do that here as well. I don't need to apply a type. If I had several devices um, of varying kinds, uh, I could do that here. Um, I can also add it to a group. I'm just going to call it CR3000A for now and choose Next. The next thing I need are those certificate files. So I'm clicking on Create a Certificate. And we see I need the certificate file. I'll download that. I also need the private key, so I'll download that. And then the root CA, which is something else that we need. If I click on this download button, it will take me to this screen. And I've already previously downloaded this VeriSign Class 3 root CA certificate. So let's come back here and activate these certificates. And now I need to attach a policy. I previously created an allow all policy. Policies are individual to what it is you want to do with the platform. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this allow all policy and register my thing. I've successfully registered my thing. If I make this bigger, we see that CR3000A here in the list. The other thing I need to know is that MQTT server host name. So let's get that now. I'm going to come down here to interact and here is the information I need. I'm highlighting it. I'm going to copy it. Go over to Crimson 3.1 and paste that right here. Now I'm going to attach those files that I had previously downloaded. So I click on Browse. Here is the file I downloaded. I'm going to click on the private key, attach that, and then the server CA file that I had previously downloaded. Okay, that's it in terms of the service side of things. Now we need to decide what data we want to send. So I've clicked on the Tag Data 1 tab. You see we have four tabs here. That allows you to send groups of data over different time periods, or maybe you want to send something based on a triggering event. You have the ability to send those groups of data any way you, you see fit. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to send them uh, once a second 
periodically. Over on the resource pane, I'll choose data tags. Maybe I want to have the active alarms, uh, the status of the input, output, and automatic modes. Those Modbus registers, the high set point and low set point, I just double click and now I've done Modbus to MQTT conversion, as easy as that. I also want the in total and total output and the current tank volume. All right, so that's the Crimson 3.1 setup. I'm gonna send this to my HMI and come back over to the web server to validate that everything is running. All right, we can see that the input is on and things are starting to move. We can see that I can again interact with the device, turn on that output if I want. And now let's go see what's happening on the Amazon Web Services platform. I'm going to come to the shadow link. And as soon as I click on shadow, we see data here. These are uh, data points that I sent over in Crimson 3.1. Let's for a moment look at that output. Right now it says on. I'm going to turn it off on my HMI and we see it switch to off. Those Modbus registers that I showed you before, here they are, 18 and 5. Let's say I want to make this 20. We see it immediately change on the Amazon Web Services platform to 20. And here, 3 becomes 3 in the Amazon Web Services platform. So that's it. That's how easy it is to set up Crimson 3.1 to communicate with Amazon Web Services. It is as simple as clicking on the Amazon MQTT T connector, enabling the service, uh, pointing it where it needs to go, giving it a name, adding in the certificate files, and then doing the uh, selection of data tags. Look for more tips and tricks here on our YouTube channel, and thanks for watching.